Okay, unlike power drift videos which start with a crazy montage and a whole bunch of energy, this video is probably going to start off on a bit of a somber note. Well, not somber, an emotional note because uh, behind these doors, Maruti Suzuki headquarters, um, is a car I've been wanting to shoot and talk about for about five or six years now. It's not a brand new Maruti, it's not some crazy prototype car. We're probably not going to be able to drive it today. but. In my opinion, it is possibly, no not possibly, it is one of the most important cars in India today, period. What is it? Well, you've probably guessed and probably seen the thumbnail by now. So let's go have a quick look. Ladies and gentlemen, the first ever Maruti Suzuki car that sold in India. The legendary DIA6479. I can't believe I'm finally get to shoot this because uh, I am not pretending to be speechless on video. To be in the presence of this car now fully restored. Uh, you know we have red letter days, some people go and drive a Bugatti Veyron or Chiron or something and latest Ferrari. This is my kind of red letter day. Take me away. Take me away. Now before I go any further and swoon over this car, we need to very briefly touch upon the history of Maruti. It started off in the 1960s as Maruti Udyog Limited, the brainchild of Sanjay Gandhi who wanted India's own Volkswagen or Model T moment, a people's car. Originally, several two-stroke and two-cylinder East German cars were imported into India and an attempt at reverse engineering was made. In fact, 29 cars were created but the effort in general was futile and soon Maruti was running out of funds too. That is, until Indian banks were nationalized. There was even a time where Maruti was in a bit of a lull and they made, or rather assembled, road rollers. Then when the Gandhi government came back into power in the 80s, a final serious attempt at finding the right car began with players like Ford, Volkswagen, Isuzu and Daihatsu in the running. In fact, history will tell us that it was supposed to originally be Daihatsu that was supposed to be chosen, but Suzuki clinched it at the last minute and well, as they say, the rest is history. 16 December 1983, this car, this very car, the first ever was delivered to Harpal Singh in Delhi. It was always famous and then infamous as it rotted away by the side of the road, ignored, almost abandoned, until Maruti bought it back. And fast forward a few years, here we are today. So now that I've told you a bit of the unknown history of Maruti Suzuki, let's talk a bit more of the car because let's treat this segment now as a bit of a traditional walk around that we do. So let's talk about the technical specifications, what's under the bonnet here. Now, 800cc engine, that's where the Maruti 800 moniker comes from. Technically, to be perfectly precise, it's 796cc, three cylinders and in fact, the iteration of this engine, the evolution of this engine is still going on in the Alto 800 which is parked right there. We'll, we'll show you maybe a little clip of it later. But uh, that's of course fuel injected. This is carbureted. Now unlike Fiat's and Ambassadors and stuff like that which was prevalent in the day and age when this was launched, this is a dual barrel carburetor. So you've got a primary throttle and you've got a secondary throttle and it gives you better fuel economy and it gives you a bit more performance as well. Now, Mikuni, Japanese company again, Older carbs, Solex, British, they didn't really work really well, they used to leak. These things when they came about were absolutely bulletproof and one of the big advantages of it being bulletproof is a lot of women drivers took to these. They were really easy to drive. You sat down low, it was just light and easy to operate and of course you had a floor shift gearbox. Now, by this time, Premier had already introduced the floor shift gearbox somewhere in the late 70s, 77 or 78. In fact, my grandfather had the first ever, the first 
ever floor shift Pug Mini ever made. But nonetheless, uh, this was much nicer a gearbox, much smoother. In fact, I'll go on a limb and say the SS80 gearbox, the early Aruti Suzuki gearboxes, the four speeds are one of the best gearboxes that India has ever seen for a floor shift, shift action gearbox. It's insanely good to drive. And the great thing about this car is also, even somebody as fat as me can really fit in because it's so spacious on the inside. The packaging is great. Why is it great? Because unlike the other cars of its time, this was front wheel drive. They took the formula that Mini perfected in the mass market and brought it here to India and absolutely killed it. And everything now is front wheel drive in India, isn't it? So that's a bit of a technical sort of run through of the car, but there's just so much to talk about. So let's go a bit closer, shall we? Look at this. It's aged so nicely. The old Maruti logo, the M logo. It's such a pretty logo too. And of course, you've got the Maruti 800 badging on the front and you've got the seal beam headlights. You can't really change the bulb in them. The original headlights were from Japan. In fact, a lot of these parts that came on the car were from Japan. But unlike what people actually think, and there's a misconception going around for years and years, these were never imported as a single unit from Japan, the production cars. All of them were made right here in India, in Gurgaon, in fact. They were never made in Japan. Yes, there are tons and tons and tons and tons of parts on them which were imported from Japan and put on the car. But they were still made in India. They're very much an Indian product. They were never, never, ever, ever made in Japan. So if somebody claims to sell you a made in Japan Maruti Suzuki, you can tell them to go take a hike. Just look at the simplicity of everything here. I mean, look at these simple door handles. The Alto still has these, these sort of flappy door handles. And even just the way this shuts, this iconic clink brings back so many memories. Of course, I own a couple of later cars, but I don't own an SS80 anymore. But this video probably will make me go out and buy another one, which will be my third one in the last five or six years. I don't know why I keep selling them, but nonetheless, I'm probably gonna get another one of these. Well, probably not a good thing to say this on camera and have like a million of you see this because then you'll probably want to charge me a lot more. But nonetheless, 12 inch wheels, 145 70R12 tires, unlike what people put 145 80, that's the wrong size. And just the change in tire size makes a huge difference to the way it drives. One of my favorite things on the car, this little trim piece, just breaks up the bulk of the C pillar so nicely. And then of course you have these little cute little tail lamps. Ah, so nice. Now, okay, on this car, there are some mistakes that Maruti has made. So for example, the badging isn't in the exact correct spot. And this needs to be a trim piece and not a sticker. But well, you don't really get stuff anymore for these cars. You do have to find and literally scavenge across um, junkyards and stuff like that. But overall, they've done a very, very good job of restoring this car. I so wish this car wasn't in the NCR region so we could drive it. It would be an absolute, absolute honor. But even if we can't drive it, at least they have been gracious enough to let me sit inside and get a bit of a feel. Oh, I am now going to really, really miss mine, isn't it? Okay, I'm just gonna remove my shoes and get my socky feet in because I can't really uh, stand to see these carpets get stained by any sort of dirt that I might have on my shoes. Now, let me do one thing. Let me actually make you hear the distinct and very iconic sound of the door shutting on these because, listen to this, quiet. How iconic is that sound? Okay, anyways. Interiors. Now, remember when I said I can fit in them? I'm a big person, right? I'm large. You made a point of telling me that on my videos as well. Not that it matters, but even I fit so comfortably here. Um, I have headspace, I have wiggle room. If there's a passenger sitting next to me, I have space as well. And look at my driving position. It's absolutely... Oh, this brings back so many memories. It's perfect. Now, there are, again, as I said, on the outside, there are some mistakes on the outside. There are some errors on the inside as well. So, for example, this shouldn't be gloss black. It's been painted. It's been restored a bit because these have a tendency of cracking right here. And this has cracked, but it's been sort of restored. This needs to be natural gray, like a natural plastic green gray. But overall, this car is in fantastic shape. The kind of parts they've found, 
These parts are super rare. This dashboard, an uncracked dashboard in perfect condition is next to impossible to find. So you've got these lovely clocks in the middle here. I mean, you've got a speedometer, you're very simple fuel gauge and temperature gauge and oil pressure and battery condition gauge and the indicators and the high beam super simple there's barely any light in it when you turn the sort of small little parking light on it's like just a little hint of a small bulb there but overall again just so pretty just so simplistic they just did things really nicely in the 80s didn't they and again stuff like this like this hasn't been cut up Having this original uncut dashboard is super, super rare. Uh, people used to put a little digital clock in the middle there. That hasn't been done on this car. So that's again a rare thing. Does the glove box work? Oh, the glove box hinge works as well. Super rare. I've never had a SS80 with the glove box cover closing properly. So this is ultra, ultra rare. And of course, this one has the uh, fan control. So this doesn't have an AC fitted into it because I believe there should be a little click switch of some sort. But this has a blower so uh, it has a heater and a standard blower but overall my favorite part of design of the whole thing well I, in fact i have two one is the houndstooth sort of uh, design on the center part of the seats now again a seat this is supposed to be dark gray and it's supposed to be houndstooth or on the on the more premium deluxe version it's like a beautiful tan interior like a dark tan almost like a brown interior and my second favorite part of design has to be this small beautifully crafted gear knob it just falls in your hand ah, so well i mean it's just an absolute glorious little piece of design obviously i can keep talking about this car for hours and hours and hours but i'm not going to because i know you don't really want to see it or hear about it but again this is such an important little piece and i can't believe i'm sitting in it but you know what We've sneaked the keys in. Again, they say Suzuki and not Maruti as the later ones did. And I think we can start it up. Should we? Choke pulled. Cold start. Let's see if it kicks in. There you go. Perfect. Nice little three cylinder rumble. It idles so well. Chokes off. Still idling. Before they shout at us for having this on, we're not supposed to be doing that. Okay, now before we actually let you guys go, there's one thing that's very, very cool and distinctive to this car that I'm gonna show you. Now, unlike the later cars which have a full opening tailgate, this doesn't, only the glass opens in this and that became like a very iconic thing for the SS80. You can do it either via the key here and as you can see, just the glass opens up and you've got such a massive boot on the inside. Look at the space here, it's huge. But it's not just this had opened up because in these cars you actually had a little lever which the later cars didn't have they cut that out in the more iconic or well the more commonly known 800 that we know the later ones i wish i could drive it on the road just once but again because we're in the ncr region that isn't going to be allowed but whatever little time i've spent with this car is super super important but before we go there's a little gift that i've made for the car that i think we need to present somebody from Maruti because to make this car now absolutely period correct, there's a little touch that we need to add. Something that will look just perfect. Have you guys guessed what it is yet? Let me give you a hint. In the early 2000s, all the cars in India looked completely different suddenly because one big aspect of them changed forever. We are going to take this car back to its 1980s look because it deserves to be a 1980s look. So what I've decided to do is gift Maruti a set of handmade period correct number plates. Now yes I know that this should be white but 
This is of course a car that's going to be on display and probably never driven. So I thought we'd go a little bit better and have these polished up just to look that little bit nicer. Fronts and rears. Maybe let's have a look at how they look on the car quickly. Now that, that looks perfect, doesn't it? I do hope Maruti does more of these. A full historical fleet showcasing their rich and important Indian automotive heritage. With the number of people they've put up on four wheels, they truly deserve it.